So writing tests with the router. Usually I try to avoid them, especially those kind of tests where, for example, we have a component, we write a test where we click on a button and then we are navigating to a different route. To me, this is more a use case for an end-to-end -end test, so with Playwright or with Cypress, but not for Jasmine or Chest or whatever we have. But nevertheless, there are some situations, testing scenarios, where we need to include something of the router context. For example, if we have a component which has a router parameter, which could be the ID, so the component takes this ID, goes to the backend and says, hey, give me back the entity information for that particular ID. Now, what we can do is that we can, of course, always mock the activated route service because this is what we usually have to use there. Um, but in the end, it is always better if we try to avoid mocking. So the fewer mocks we have, the more our test reflects the real world or the real world behavior of our application. And it would be good if we could maybe configure the routing itself and then can use the original activated route service and also, of course, the router link directive. Now, for a very long time, we had the router testing module, which, in all honesty, was not that well documented. Then we had community projects like Spectacular from Lars, from Lars Nielsen, which is very good. But since Angular 15.2, we have the router testing harness, not many know about it, or I don't, or I don't see it that often. And the router testing harness is actually perfect for that use case. With the router testing harness, we only need to configure the routes that we have and then can use the services as they are. And this is what we are going to do now. So we have here one component which is actively using the router. We have here an ID which contains the, sig uh, the signals, so the ID which we will then read from the, from the router itself. We are injecting the activated route service and then we are subscribing to it and we are requesting here then the ID from the power map. There are of course different ways on how we can get access to this ID. We can in 17.1, we can already use uh, signal inputs where the that the router parameter is directly provided into the into that property here as well. But in the end, when it comes to testing, it's all the same. So what we want to do is that we want to write a test where we are navigating to a component, to this component, where the ID in the router in the URL has the value 5. And then I want to verify that there is somewhere a paragraph element in the DOM that says current ID 5. Now, I have already here prepared some kind of a test. So what we have to do, as always, we say testbed configure testing module. We are importing that detail component and then we say create component, detail component. And of course, this returns us the fixture. And what I have to do next is that I need to say detect changes. And then I hope for the best. But now in the meantime, the activated route fetches the or provides me with the ID and that the component is rendering it. Obviously, I've missed to do anything in terms of mocking or configuration of the router system and that's why this test is going to fail. So if I run it, we will not see the common error message, at least I see it quite often, null injector error, so the activated route is missing. Now, what I said before, what we could do is that we could now provide a mock for it. So I could say, yeah, so that I am going to provide now the activated route service on my own. So I say this one here provides the activated route and I use a value which is at the beginning an empty object. I rerun the test and then we will see what happens. Well, now it says cannot read properties of undefined, which is the common error message when a subscription to an observable wants to happen and it hits an undefined value, which is what we have exactly here. So our mocked activated route does not know about the power map. And well, what I usually have to do now is that I need to provide this power map in my mock. So I say, okay, the power map is a normal map, which is string string. And I say, 
since the ID will be there, I say I'm going to add the ID and we said we want to provide here the number five. So this is what, I, what I'm going to set. And then I say, well, the param map is now also available and it is an observable which returns me that param map here. So I say off, provide the param map. I rerun the test just to verify if it's still failing. Yeah, no, it doesn't. And then I am already done and I can now verify if the ID is then really rendered. So I say to my fixture, I need to get access to the debug element. I want to query something via the CSS and I'm going to looking and I'm going to look for a, an HTML paragraph. And I want to get access to the native element because I want to fetch the text content attribute from it. And this is what I want then to that what I assert to. So I say here, that's the yeah, let's call it just P. It's the HTML paragraph element. And uh, we have an expect where I say, yeah, so the text content to be current ID is, let's say one, and then let's verify the, the error message is the correct one. Yeah, current ID is five and not one. This is how it should be. We rerun the test and we are already done. Now the problem here is, first of all, that's a very easy test, a very easy, simple component. Usually it's a little bit larger, it's a little bit more complicated, but we are now very bound to the, um, to the power map. So if I'm going to change here something that I say, yeah, I'm not going to access it here via the power map. I want to use the snapshot property, for example, or I change something else in the implementation then I always need to kind of um, update my mock as well. And this is not something which I really want to do. There is also another reason why maybe it's not the best idea to, all, to mock always all those services. We don't really know when the activated route will provide access to the power map. So it could be that the routing system takes some time, maybe only in the engine init phase, that only there the power map has the value available. So if we would say here, I want to access the snapshot and I want to access the power map, maybe it's in the beginning undefined. We don't know. That's actually something that Angular is doing, the framework is doing, and I don't want to care about these things. So I say, yeah, I don't want to kind of re-implement the logic of the, of the activated route. In the best case, I want to use the activated route as it is, and I just want to test if the thing is working. And this is now where that why and where the router testing harness is so good, or where, 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 we, where we can use it. So with the router testing harness, I don't need to care about the activated route anymore. So I can remove the providers. I can also remove here the power map. And everything that I have to do is that I have to come up now with an own router configuration. So I say here providers, and I say provide router. And I say, okay, I can now make up, make up any router or URL, whatever I want to. Uh, it's just important that the component that I want to test is included now in this routing configuration. So I say, okay, I have a path. Let's say detail, or you can also say customer, whatever you want. Important is that there is the parameter there in the router configuration, the ID. And then I'm assigning here my component to it. So I say detail component and I can also let go of the fixture. So I have now configured the testing module that it contains a, a routing configuration. What do I do next? You see already I use here an async that it's important because whenever we use a harness, so the router testing harness is not the only harness that does exist, especially for the Angular material components. We have quite a lot of harnesses but in general, harnesses always require async await because harnesses internally also take care about the change detection and also about asynchronous functions if they run, for example. So quite often, we don't need to use fake async together with tick. The harnesses take care of that. So in our case, we say here, router testing harness, and the router testing harness as a static method, which is create. And with create, we cannot already define to which 
URL we want to navigate. So I say here, yeah, I want to navigate to detail and I don't want to na navigate to detail 5, but maybe to 7. Yeah. The router, cr the create method returns me now the router, the, the, the harness itself, which I am going to store into a variable. And it is, everything is now a promise. So the create returns a promise. That's why I need to use the await here. I don't need to call change detection anymore. The harness takes care of that. The only thing that I now have to do is that I go again to my debug element, to my component fixture, and query for the DOM element. How do I get the fixture? Well, the harness provides it. So harness has a fixture object. That's the fixture of the component where we are at the moment. So we can leave everything as it is. We can rerun the test, and we would expect that we are getting an error message because the current ID isn't 5 anymore, but 7. Yeah, let's run it. Yeah, error message, current ID is 7. Let's fix it. And we're done. So we see with the router testing harness, we can really test the application more as it behaves in real life. As I said before, we don't need to mock the activated route, also the router link works as expected, and it just gives us better feeling. It, 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 it's a better confidence when it comes to testing. So please, whenever you write tests which contain in any way router configuration, router context, um, make use or use the router testing harness. That was it already. As always, if you're interested, learning more about Angular testing and we have a special workshop for that and if you liked my video I would be happy about a like also subscribe to my channel and if you have any questions please let me know below in the comments thanks and see you in the next video goodbye